Love this question. So in software engineering, the business model is the collection of entities that allow the implementation of business rules. And so that begs the question, what's a business rule? We'll get to that in a minute. One thing that's important to call out here is that business model in tech can mean more than business model in software engineering. So the term is used a few different ways. Business model can just be like, how does your company make profit, make revenue, cut costs, address consumer market, product market fit. And ideally, one should be based on the other. So your software should be enabling real like humans to do real stuff, like your end users. And so you want to have a business model in your software that enables real humans to do real things. Like you might have a user um, who can log into Walmart and shop, right? So that's a real person doing a real thing. It's going to result in profit for the business if done properly. And you're going to need a collection of AP, like functions and API and database entities more than likely to support all this. But notice that none of what I've said specifies whether the database need be SQL or NoSQL and so on. We also have a distinction in emphasis. It's not a bright line. It's a distinction in emphasis between what we call business data and technical data. So technical data would be something like uptime and latency. And you will typically not have product analysts or business analysts referring to that. Um, they will be referring to things like um, the Walmart user who logged in to go shopping. How many users do we have? Like, how much are they shopping? What are they buying? Like, what do those things cost? And they're going to be dealing with business decisions in that domain as a matter of emphasis. It's not like we... We usually don't technically block them, although there are companies where they, the business analysts literally won't have permission to go over to you know, Datadog or whatever, the system of record for, for latency. Another technical um, data store would be logs. Um, so very often we'll use logs for troubleshooting and the business analysts won't be using these. And there is also event, event data. So you can have an event-based data model, and this one is more cross-functional. So you'll actually very often have product analysts, business analysts, product managers look at events as a funnel metric. Um, so when the user signs up to the website, like we blast out marketing, how many of them ended up signing up? Then how many of them actually like put something in their cart? Then how many of them checked out? You can have event data for these and Business analysts and product analysts do care about this. And we also use it for troubleshooting. And so you might have a mixture of events where some events are considered like uh, relatively interesting to the business and some events are considered more technical, like basically only program programmers care about them. Um, and so that's a distinction in emphasis. Then we also distinguish in the software code between business entities and technical entities. So a user is kind of a at the, at the intersection of these, because a user, there is like a technical concept of a user for authentication purposes, but it's also very interesting from a business perspective. Um, then when we think about something like an event, so we're going to be saving these event records, right? Which might be used by whoever, but the event itself is typically considered a technical entity. There is a business agnostic schema that forms a good practice for what an event looks like. Uh, basically, you're going to have like a name and then some content for the event. And this will basically ap apply regardless of your business model. And that's why we don't consider it um, a business entity. It's a technical entity because the implementation of a good event system is going to apply regardless of your business purpose, what you're wanting your, like regardless of what you're wanting your users to do. Um, and a lot of authentication falls in here and a lot of um, like how you log is going to fall in here and how you record latency, how you build your web pages. Um, like you want to be able to load your web page very quickly, pretty much regardless of the business that you're in. So a lot of these will consider these like technical constructs as opposed to business entities. And you may or may not use the same data stores for these things. Um, so we'll often have a runtime database or an application database. Um, I think OTLP is the academic jargon. Uh, and then you'll have an analytical database, which is in large companies going to be separate. In smaller companies, you might actually have analysts working on your runtime database, but that's not ideal. And it's very straightforward. The reason that's not ideal. If they're going to do a big query, it's going to slow down your database and impact your users. Like that's not ideal. So you should actually separate those databases. 
And so this is part of the whole data modeling business uh, model concern too, is when we talk about your analysts and your product managers and your other stakeholders, how do they get the data that they care about? Um, is going to be like a data modeling concern that isn't internal to your application code. This could span across multiple applications and it could refer to the allocation of your infrastructure. So in that question of data modeling, we are going to include things like component access, like where are your analysts looking for what bits of data? So that's another element of data modeling. And DDIA does get into this, uh, again, talking about like the differences between an analytical uh, like an OLAP or a warehouse. Um, and that gets into even security implications that I think are less explored in DDIA, but you can just easily imagine that like if you work at this tech company and you have all of these different databases, you might just need access to some of them, right? And there's practical implications of that of like how many licenses does the company need to, company need to buy? But that will be involved in this data modeling conversation too, is not just internal to one piece of software, um, but like across all the components, how do we, how do we, we being the analysts, get the data that we care about and then calculate like if the company's actually making progress, if our you know feature that we released last quarter is meeting OKRs and objectives. So that's another part that's related to this uh, whole data modeling conversation. Hope this helped, um, follow for more. Oh, did I give you an example of what a business rule is? Um, these would just be from the point of view of the software, arbitrary rules decided by the business. And so one of these with the shopping at Walmart, one of these might be like a return policy. So like if you re return your blender, um, like you're only gonna be able to return it within 30 days, that 30 day is like from the point of view of the software, it's just arbitrary. But you can see that there's like some business rationale attached to it outside of the software. That's why we call it a business rule. Uh, and maybe like if it's open, we'll only give you store credit. But if it's like still closed or whatever, we can give you cash. These are business rules. So they're just decisions that are coming from product stakeholders and people who are responsible for business strategy rather than technical rules. So a business rule is in contrast to a technical rule. A technical rule might be something like what programming language we use, what data type we use. Like maybe we represent prices using a, a Python decimal instead of a, a float or whatever for precision. That would be a technical concern. Does that make sense? And so if you need to express this business rule about a return policy, then you will need certain data elements to capture the properties of interest. So if someone is going to return their blender we care about whether it's above or below 30 days. So we need the, the purchased at and the returned at dates. And then we want whether it's been opened or not would be like a Boolean on this, however we set up the data model. Maybe we have a, a return transaction. Um, we could model that in different ways, but that's what we mean when we're talking about business modeling. And you can also see how I could, if I wanted to have that business rule in the UI on the client side, so I could have the client check whether it's been 30 days or not and just return a Boolean instead of returning a date. So you, do you see how those are like data modeling decisions that your team would have to solve? Um, and while we stereotype that the business logic will be handled on the back end, it doesn't necessarily need to be. I got kicked out of the car. <laughs> um, I would also argue, here's a last note, I would also argue that the user experience, the theme that the user is experiencing constitutes business rules um, because these are like arbitrary color schemes and shapes set by set outside of the uh, purview of decision making of the software engineering team whether it's by design or by product owners or whatever so I think that's I think you have examples of business rules there too